On October 2nd, local dogs will have a chance to compete in a Halloween costume contest. This event is designed to raise awareness in the community regarding the link between domestic violence and animal cruelty. Kelsey Durrance, a family court case coordinator, tells us about this link and the upcoming event where proceeds will benefit the Safe Haven Supervised Visitation Center and the Cumberland County Animal Services Emergency Medical Fund. Safe Haven's Debbie Norman tells us about the Supervised Visitation Center and Animal Services Director Dr. John Lobby explains how the Emergency Medical Fund is used to save animals. The majority of American households have a pet. 75% um, of families with school-aged children have at least one pet and that pet is usually felt like a family member. They treat it like a family member. And if there's violence in that family, then the animal becomes a target as well. Many times the abuser will threaten the um, pet or harm the pet, threaten to harm or kill the pet if the victim leaves. And a lot of times if the victim does leave, they will retaliate and harm or kill the pet. Nearly half of um, victims entering the shelters have stated that they delayed leaving the home or the, or the abusive situation because of fear of what would happen to their pets. And many victims end up leaving the shelter after being there for a little bit to go back and either reclaim the pet or, you know, to go back and, and protect them. Currently, there's no program in Cumberland County to give these women a reason to leave, to know that their pet's going to be safe. So I came up with the idea of starting a foster program, and what this foster program would, would have is a web of different foster families in the community that would be willing to foster an animal for up to 90 days so the victim could leave. And, and the different agencies and stuff, they could tell her, there is an out, you don't have to worry about your pet, we can get your pet into a safe confidential place and you can leave. So it's just one last thing the victim has to worry about and she can know that the pet is safe. She can reunite with that pet once she gets back on her feet and we save her and we save the pet. And if we just save one pet and one victim, if we get her out of the house, I mean one is, is a success to me. To be a foster family, um, they can contact me. Like We're just in the beginning stages of trying to get this. We want to get some vets on board to help us with the medical care if anything needs to be done. Also local um, boarding kennels to help us you know, if we do need space. And of course Dr. Lobby has offered if you know, we need temporary space real quick, we can come to him also. So um, they can contact me and of course there will be an interview process and, and check out their home to see um, how all that is and, and to make sure they got a fenced in yard. And we've come up with a, a plan of having a Halloween costume contest on October 2nd. And what we want this to do is bring awareness between the link of domestic violence and animal cruelty. And we're going to have it from 11 to 1 in the field in front of Coles. And there'll be, of course, like about six different categories of, of Halloween costume contests. And um, we'll also have bobbing for weenies or hot dogs. and the animals love that, and biting for bubbles. And so it's just a way to get out in the community and, and bring everyone together and then also get the information out there about this link. All the proceeds will go to the Animal Services Emergency Medical Fund and also Safe Haven Supervised Visitation Center. And um, the registration fee is $10 and it's $5 for every dog thereafter. And it's gonna be a lot of fun. So we hope people will come out and, and start linking these two together and helping each other. Safe Havens is a supervised visitation and exchange center. We're part of family court. Um, we were established in two, October of 2004 is when we opened the doors. Uh, Judge Elizabeth Kiever is one of the main people that got it started. So it, the center's there because of Judge Kiever. We do supervised visits on site and as well as exchanges. A supervised visit is a visit that is held in one of the three rooms that we have at the center. Um, the visits are monitored by an actual person. There's a, there's a person sitting in the room while the visit is going on, taking notes to make sure that, that it goes like it's supposed to go. Um, and the visits are with, of course, the non-custodial parent and the child or the children, however many children there are. If we do exchanges at the center, that basically means the children are exchanged from one parent, the custodial parent, to the non-custodial parent. 
Um, many of those are over the weekend from a Friday to a Sunday. Uh, we have exchanges that may be on a Wednesday too from four to eight, you know, whatever the judge has ordered. The majority of our cases are due to domestic violence. They're referred because of domestic violence. Um, at the center, the parties, the non-custodial and the custodial never do see each other. So if there has been domestic violence, um, they don't have to face each other again and, and that way the, the victim or the survivor is not in any danger. Um, and then the children also are safe because they're not in the middle. It provides an atmosphere to where the, the non-custodial parent and the child can still maintain a relationship um, and you know, be able to continue to bond. This is an, uh, an, an emergency uh, animal treatment fund that we've established here at the shelter uh, where we're getting donations from people in the county to uh, um, get us some money uh, so that we can do medical work in, on, on these animals like this puppy right here. Uh, uh, he was found wandering in the road with his right forearm cut off and the bone sticking out and infection and anemic and all of that stuff and because of the donations to this emergency fund uh, we had money available uh, where we could actually do the surgery and uh, uh, make him to where he's adoptable so we we went ahead and had the surgery done he had his leg amputated and you, you can see he's recovering very nicely and uh, he's adapting to being on three legs his name is Trey for three so um, we're happy that he's going to uh, hopefully find a home and, and uh, go to a family where somebody will enjoy him for a lot of years. Well, unfortunately, we're dealing with uh, a lot of animal cruelty here in the county, and um, we're, doing, uh, we're increasing our enforcement and trying to get the laws made a little stiffer on um, uh, the penalties for animal cruelty. And animals deserve, deserve to be treated with love and affection, not, not abused and misused. So we're hoping that uh, through um, the, through the October uh, um, gala that we'll be able to uh, get more people involved, get donations uh, and, and things where we can actually help these abused animals and get them out of the home and get them into loving homes where they'll be treated with the respect that, that they deserve and the love and the affection that they deserve. You can see this little guy did not need to be put to sleep. Before our emergency animal fund, this animal would have been brought to the shelter and put to sleep uh, immediately. And, and so now he has a chance at life, and uh, I think that's a really neat thing that, that uh, we give him an opportunity to live, and uh, he deserves, he certainly didn't deserve to be in this position, and uh, we're going to do all we can to make it so he can, he can have a normal, healthy life.